I go. All right, can you see this, me, everything? Yes. All right. Uh, good afternoon, parents. I wanted to film a quick Fan 5 review video for you. I tried to do it like I did last week. For whatever reason, my Zoom is not working. Uh, I apologize if the camera is shaky or if you can hear Luke breathing in the background. Um, but I'm going to do like a super quick version of this. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. It's kind of going to be probably hard for you to read the questions on the board, but I posted the screenshot on class tag so you can either print that out or have that on a different page. Whatever works for you. Uh, but for number one, it said Jared has $9. Aaron has three times as much money as Jared. And Greg has four more dollars than Aaron. How much money do they have combined? So both classes kind of struggle with this one today. Um, I guess they relied on their keywords a little bit too much because they saw combined and they just took nine, four, and three and added them together. Um, but we got times as much on there, which we've been dealing with multiplicative comparisons all week, two weeks, really like the whole year. Uh, we, we just talked about combined, but we've got more also. So some kids tried to just go straight into the box method, but we had never done a multiplicative comparison with more than two people. So what I told them was, I think a T-chart would have been their best move here. So you got Jared, you've got Aaron, you've got Greg. And the only person we know right now how much money they have is Jared. Like we know Jared's got nine bucks. And, and I said like, all of these questions this week are read a little, do a little. So if you just do exactly what the problem says, it kind of guides you through it. It says Aaron has, <clears throat> Aaron has three times as much money as Jared. So I would have just put three times under Aaron. And I know how much Jared has. It's right there in my chart. So I'd go three times nine. Again, if you know your facts, this gets so much easier. That would tell you three times nine. Aaron's got $27. And you can read a little bit, do a little bit more. Greg has four more dollars than Aaron. We've got our addition anchor chart over here. We know more means we're gonna do some addition. So four more, I would just do four more than Aaron who we just figured out has 27. And then you can stack these up, add them together. Um, and that would give you $31 for Greg. The last part, how much money do they have combined? That's the part where you can just take all three numbers, add them together. And that would have given you 67. I told him I don't really feel comfortable adding more than two numbers at once. So I probably would have gone 31 and 27, added that up and got 58. Then I would have added that final nine. Uh, we had 15 out of 24 in my homeroom, get that question right. We're only eight out of 20 in the afternoon. Uh, but a lot of people didn't have a visual to go with it. So I think with, um, with seeing that today, I think that'll help. Number two was the second lowest which honestly I was kind of surprised because they dealt with area and perimeter in third grade. Uh, but I will, say, <clears throat> I will say we haven't done anything like this this year, so maybe that's why. My smart board stinks. Uh, for number two, it says my rectangular living room has an area of 40 square feet and a perimeter of 28 feet. What could be the length and the width? So I told them if this were me doing this question and I've got a uh, area and perimeter question where it gives me a shape I'm drawing that shape and honestly I would draw it for a b c and d so here's a b c and d and I would label it exactly like the answer choices have it so a is 20 feet by 2 feet uh, 10 feet by 4 feet 8 feet by 5 feet 7 feet by 4 feet again I'm reading a little and doing a little I would just focus on the area part first uh, they should know that as soon as you see the word area, you should be thinking length times width. And I would try to get rid of any answer choices that don't fit. Like A, I'd have to keep because 20 times 2 gives me 40. 10 times 4 gives me 40. 8 times 5 gives me 40. But I could get rid of D because that would give me an area of 28 square feet. So I wouldn't even need to waste any time with that one. The second part is where you're going to find out your answer. Because with the perimeter of 28 feet, that means you've got to add all the way around to get 28 we looked at every single rectangle this morning and this afternoon, but just to save time. The answer is B, because we know opposite sides are equal. I would have four for my widths, 10 for my lengths. Uh, and if I did 10 plus 10, that would give me 20. Four plus four would give me eight. Add those together and I'd have a perimeter of 28. So it's gotta fit both descriptions. Honestly, the people who missed that one are just gonna be the people who aren't willing to do the work. Can you see me right now? <laughs> Just making sure everybody's tilted towards the ground. 
All right, Coming. number three was our best. We went 39 out of 44. So we got a chance to, honestly, we should Ric Flair this question at some point this week. I'll be honest, it wasn't super challenging today, but it will get a little bit harder. It says, I'm an odd number. I'm a factor of 27, 36, and 45. What number am I? I would have focused on the odd number part first. Can eliminate four immediately. And then you just got to know your facts. We eliminated five really quickly today because if you're going to be a multiple of five, you got to end in zero or five. So we know we can't do five times anything to get 27 or 36. Uh, if you don't know your facts for seven, you can say, hey, I don't know. I can list my multiples. Seven times one times two times three times four. Once you do that, you see you skip right over 27. So seven could not be a factor of those numbers. Answer is D and we can prove it. Because if you did list your multiples of nine, you would see nine times three gave you 27, times four gave you 36, uh, times five gives you 45. So not knowing your facts really isn't an excuse anymore because we can list our multiples and we spent a lot of time doing that. But like I said, 39 out of 44 to start the week, awesome. Here's where it got really ugly. And this is partially my fault. Because uh, when I used to teach third grade, I know we used to teach right angle. What was that? My back's starting to hurt. <laughs> okay. um, I know I used to teach right angles, acute angles, obtuse angles. Um, apparently that's not exactly in the curriculum anymore. Even with it not, it's something that we're going to do at the end of this school year. So they're seeing this super early. The things we talked about today. We talked about how anything less than 90, which is what you were provided, is an acute angle. They wrote that in their notebooks. We talked about if it is a perfect L with that straight corner or that square corner, that's a what? 90. That's a 90 degree angle. It is a right angle. And anything that is more open than that right angle, which is what we are missing, that's called an obtuse angle. Obtuse is going to be greater than 90 uh, and less than 180. So if we know we're missing an obtuse angle, we know this number has to be greater than 90. Look, we get rid of A, B, and C just like that. So we know the answer is D. But the way that I want them to solve it this week, they got to be able to look at this line or this shape and they got to be able to see this angle down at the bottom. We call this a straight angle. It's 180 degrees. And if I know this whole thing is 180 degrees, I can take away what I already have, which is 77. And that's just going to show me whatever I've got left. So obviously in my ones place, I've got more on the floor. So I'd have to regroup. But if I did that, that would prove that my answer is 103 degrees. So this week, if they're able to identify that straight angle being 180, they'll be a lot better off. Um, even if they can't, they'll be able to eliminate answer choices based off of if whatever's missing is acute or obtuse. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to make their life a little bit easier. All right, number five. I'm going to tell you this. I was kind of disappointed with five because we dominated five last week. The only thing that's different is we don't have answer choices, but I didn't think we needed them. Um, and I'm not going to give them answer choices on this one this week. Uh, we only had 22 out of the 40, so we were 50% on this one today. Last week, I showed the area model. That's on that class tag post from last week. You're welcome to go back and look. Uh, I showed them just the standard way today, and I told them this is going to take some practice. Um, and I honestly, I, can, I told them maybe you should just do the area model. And if you want to try it this way to see if your answers match, you can do that. Um, but what I'm going to show them this week is we're just going to stack them, do it the traditional way. I told them we almost want to act like this seven doesn't even exist. So it's almost like we're doing 46 times six. So starting in the ones place, we'll go six times six and we'll get 36. Six days, three goes. Then I'll go across here to the tens. We'll do six times four, give us 24. Plus that three gives us 27. Once I'm done multiplying by the ones place, I'm going to scratch it out. I'm also going to get rid of anything that I carried over. So now I can multiply by the tens place. This is where everybody gets tripped up. Before I start multiplying by the tens place though, I'm gonna come down to this second line and I'm gonna put this zero. We call that a placeholder. Main reason we're doing that. If I'm multiplying by the tens place, the first number I'm gonna put down here is gonna be in the tens place. So we can't forget that placeholder. If we forget that, it throws the whole thing off. 
And then I'm gonna go in the same order. I'm gonna go seven times six, give me 42. Two stays, four goes. Go up here to the 10, seven times four is 28, plus four is 32. And then the only thing I would have to do is add those numbers together and I would get 3,496. I don't expect them to do that perfectly tomorrow, maybe not even Wednesday. I'd like to see them at least try it, but that area model we've been really successful with, hopefully they'll try that. I hope this gives you a little bit of help at home. Um, if you can come up with some practice questions for your kids, it makes a difference. I've said it a bunch, getting a four or five on that fan five quiz on Friday really helps your grade. So hope this helps. Thanks for watching.